Hi, I'm Charles with Anycap. Previously, Bai was accepted as a disciple to become an immortal. In the immortal realm, Bai would discover that his chosen walk is able to double the power of anything he puts in it. However, he loses some lifespan when he does. Later, Bai heads to the Bloodstream Sector in search of the Relic of Eternity. He wears the disguise that completely hides his identity and power level, but Song becomes suspicious when Bai is the only one not affected by the force of a battle between two powerful disciples. The story continues as Bai's disguise as Yi Zhang is about to be discovered, but luckily the earth begins to shake and we see that it's being caused by someone familiar with Yi Zhang. This very masculine woman takes Bai away, but we soon see that Bai has gotten away from her. Bai scolds Dan for having such a frightening mistress, and Dan reveals that he actually has more than one. Just then, Bai accidentally sets off an alarm that alerts guards that someone has broken into Middle Peak. Guards can't believe that someone would dare to break sector rules, and begin to wonder if it's a spy from the Spirit Stream sector. They aren't able to find Bai, and we see that he is nearby. He is amazed to see that Middle Peak is so strictly guarded, and Dan explains that it's because the position of Bloodmaster in the Middle Peak is currently vacant. To be allowed up the mountain, one must be at least a guardian in Middle Peak. The Bloodmaster Hall is located at the top of the mountain, and there are probably double the guards than normal. The other problem is that they must still make the elixir that will open the Bloodmaster Hall's secret chamber. Making the elixir will be very difficult as it must be connected and blended with the sector's heirlooms. Dan explains that the path to retrieving the Relic of Eternity is harder than ascending to heaven, but Bai is confident that they can do it. He states that all they have to do is pretend to have Mortal Vein Foundation establishment and get promoted to Middle Peak Guardian. Dan likes the plan and explains that the Sector will be holding a Mortal Vein trial, but Bai must first complete a mission to obtain enough contribution points. Out of the five peaks of the Bloodstream Sector, Corpse Peak is set to pick the mission this year, and it will definitely be about refining puppet corpses. This is because Disciples in Corpse Peak cultivate secret blood for puppet refinement. For this reason, the workshops for raising corpses and refining puppets on Corpse Peak are enveloped in blood key all year round, and usually, refining puppets on Corpse Peak can take months or even years. Bai arrives at Corpse Peak soon after, and hears Sean state that the corpse raising workshop is his territory. He has invested all his assets into it, and now he makes all the rules. Sean is then surprised to see Yi Zhang, who explains that he is there to take the mission for the Mortal Vein trial. Sean agrees to let him go and gives by a jade slip for the mission. Just then, the Corpse Peak Grand Elder arrives and explains that tensions are beginning to rise between the four sectors. Because of this, only the most elite will be selected for this year's Mortal Vein Foundation establishment. The mission this time will involve refining white puppets, which shocks everyone since it's a superior item. Those that succeed will join the Mortal Vein trial in three months. Sean explains that of the five superior items, refining the white puppet is the easiest. All they need to do is fuse puppet seed with secret blood, and skillfully stimulate it. The higher their cultivation level, the better chance of success they will have, but it will take half a year to do it. All the disciples complain about it taking too long, so Sean reveals that the underworld blood pill will cause it to directly evolve itself into a puppet comparable to the patriarch's unchanging bone in only 10 days. The disciples then complain about that pill being impossible to get, so Sean tells them to simply rely on their own ability to refine it instead. Bai thinks about how refining is his specialty, and only now gets to show it off since he was so misunderstood in the spirit stream sector. Bai disguised as Yi Zhang is then taken to the secret blood pool for refining puppets. However, he is startled by a small person and told that it is the puppet seed that he will be refining. Just then, Bai's body interacts with the blood key again, and he wonders what the origin of Corpse Peak's secret blood is. The blood is clearly the base for all the peaks, and it must be connected and blended with the heirlooms. Bai realizes that these are the characteristics required for the gate opening pill, and decides that he will refine the puppet and the pill now. Dan would like for Bai to focus on refining the puppet since he only has 3 months to do so. Bai assures him that he has a plan, and reveals that he will also be making pills to accelerate the puppet's transformation into a white puppet. Bai tosses the spirit pills to the puppet, and decides that they will come back to get it in 3 months. They then move on to more pressing matters as Bai amazes Dan with Beast King blood, and explains how difficult it was to get it. Bai then has flashbacks of how he begged his adopted Beast King's son for one drop of blood, and bribed him with everything he could. Bai continues refining the gate opening pill, and after some time, it's done. 
Dan points out that Bai now has a 50% chance of opening the door, but Bai reveals that he plans to spirit refine it four times to make it more reliable. Bai still needs four leaf grass to do the spirit refining, and Dan explains that it grows on the 10,000 blood cliffs. Just then, the color of the liquid shockingly begins to change, and everyone panics as this is not normal. Nearby, Sean states to the Grand Elder that he has rented out his corpse raising workshop for a year, and guarantees that after three months, the first batch of refined puppets will be born. Sean plans to give them to the Grand Elder as payment, but is shocked to hear that something serious has happened. He is told that the total amount of secret blood for refining puppets was just instantly reduced to 30%. Back with Bai, Dan explains that he has seen many puppets in the bloodstream sector, but has never seen what he is seeing now. Just then, Bai begins to hear something like rushing water, and Dan is shocked to see that Bai's puppet seems to have drawn all the secret blood to their room. Soon after, Dan hides himself and Bai is in disbelief as his tiny puppet has become a giant one. Outside, Sean can only watch in horror as all the secret blood has suddenly disappeared. Just then, Sean and the Grand Elder are shocked to see that Yi Zhang's entrance actually has blood flowing out of it. Sean is furious to see that Yi Zhang is causing so much havoc in his territory, but his attempt to capture him is paused when Yi Zhang emerges just as the corp raising workshop is destroyed. Sean blames Yi Zhang for everything and summons his puppet to attack Bai. Bai knows that his Yi Zhang disguise will die from the attack, but he also cannot attack since it will expose his identity. He can't decide what to do but soon finds that he doesn't have to, as his little puppet has arrived to save him. Sean is in disbelief to see what Yi Zhang has refined, and can't understand how the puppet can have green hair. Bai's puppet easily overpowers Sean's black puppet, and Bai is surprised to see that his puppet seems to be protecting him. Sean complains to the elder, and is then confused to see his black puppet reappear several times, but it doesn't obey him anymore. The grand elder then springs into action as he is furious that Yi Zhang has destroyed his corpse raising workshop. Furthermore, Yi Zhang has used up all the secret blood. The Elder points out that Yi Zhang's green puppet doesn't have the strength of one at Foundation Establishment, but does have the rare and wondrous ability to control other puppets, even those at a higher grade than it. Bai offers to give the Jade Slip for controlling the green puppet and thinks about how he is certain that this will be where he dies. However, everyone is shocked to see that the Grand Elder accepts his offer. He explains that destroying a mere corpse raising workshop is nothing, and points out how Yi Zhang has made a great contribution to the sector with his offer. The Grand Elder gives Bai 5,000 spirit stones and 30,000 contribution points. He leaves but explains that Yi Zhang will go straight to the Mortal Vein trial in 3 months. Sean thinks about how Yi Zhang now has the support of the Grand Elder, so he will have to change how he treats him. Bai thinks about how Sean is suspicious of him, so he must treat him differently as well. Nearby disciples are then shocked as the two enemies quickly apologize to each other and Yi Zhang gives Sean the formula for making the green puppet. Sean then expresses confidence that Yi Zhang will do well in the Mortal Vein trial, but shocks him when he reveals that it will take place at the 10,000 Blood Cliffs. Time then jumps forward to the Bloodstream Sector's Mortal Vein Foundation Establishment trial. Grand Elders from four of the peaks will serve as supervisors, and the Corpse Grand Elder gives a speech to the disciples. He explains that after three months, those successful in Foundation establishment can freely choose to join any peak, and be promoted to Guardian. Bai, who of course is still disguised as Yi Zhang, thinks about how he already has Heavenly Vein Foundation establishment, and is confident that he will easily get promoted to Guardian. What he really needs to focus on is finding Four Leaf Grass. Other disciples state their intention to prove themselves during the trial, and vow to take down the spirit stream sector along with Bai after foundation establishment. Just then, the Grand Elder of Middle Peak arrives and Bai overhears that it's Song's aunt, June. She explains that the disciples will advance to the mortal path of foundation establishment using foundation establishment pills. She has placed 10 of the pills in a vial and drops it somewhere as she explains that all they have to do is simply fight for it. Yi Zhang is slow to jump off the cliff compared to the others, which surprises Jun, but he soon joins them. Bai takes a moment to think to himself how with his power he can grab the pill bottle at any time, but is certain that it will expose his identity. He hears a group colluding and asks to join them. Yi Zhang states that he will only need one pill, allowing them to keep the rest, and explains that his plan is to use the same move they used on Bai in the Fallen Sword Abyss. 
Moments later, we see that one man has managed to grab the vial, but is soon trapped by Bai's comrades. The trap will last three days and three nights, just like it was going to do to Bai. Yi Zhang is the one to capture the man, but his comrades are shocked to see that they have been deceived, when Yi Zhang is nowhere to be found. Bai mocks them for even thinking that they could take down the spirit stream sector with him in it, but soon finds himself being chased by the group. Bai decides that this is the perfect time to go in search of four leaf grass, and dramatically pretends to be hit by an attack. The group falls for his act as they assume he is badly injured, and determine that falling from that height will surely kill him. The elders watch as the group begin to search for Yi Zhang's corpse, but state how if Yi Zhang is smart, then he will disperse some of the pills so that he can escape. Yi Zhang has piqued Jun's curiosity, and she wonders how long he can survive. The group continue their search, and Bai watches them nearby, as he is more concerned with finding four leaf grass. He is curious to see if a blood beast will show itself next to him, but is shocked to see that it's actually the talking rabbit. It startles Bai as it seems to recognize him, but his attention changes when he realizes that he has stumbled upon a patch of four leaf grass. However, before he can get to it, Bai encounters a large blood beast, and his fight with it creates a sound that can be heard by everyone. Bai defeats the beast and finds that they are made of blood key. It's the same blood of the four peaks and it has the deep aura of the bloodstream sector. The blood key there though has not been processed and its vitality is much stronger. Bai's undying power reacts with the blood key much faster now and he begins to wonder if the story of the fallen giant is true and if it possessed the peak realm of undying power. If this is true, then Bai predicts that if he cultivates the second scroll of Undying Power there, he will be able to achieve double the results with half the effort. He does exactly that and finds that his strength explosively increases yet again, making his body much more difficult to destroy. Nearby, Song wonders who Jun would like to see become a guardian after the trial. She explains that there are many guardians in the middle peak already, but none are skillful in the medicinal path. This makes her think about Bai, who is considered a genius in the medicinal path, but this only infuriates Song. Song vows that Bai will one day die by his hands, but Jun explains that those destined for great things must understand when to let go, before they can advance further. Nearby, the group searching for Yi Zhang assumes he has been eaten by blood beasts, since there are no signs of him, but we see that he is nearby, finishing up spirit refining the gate opening pill four times. Just then, the ground begins to shake and the elders are shocked to see that the 10,000 blood cliffs volcano that has not been active for thousands of years is erupting. Yi Zhang manages to make it out alive but finds himself being chased soon after. He gives up the pills to the group but they become upset when they realize that the pills inside the vial are fake. Yi Zhang finally makes it outside the secret realm where he sits in front of the elders. They are all shocked by his behavior as Yi Zhang took all 10 foundation pills for himself cutting off everyone else's path to foundation establishment. Furthermore, he caused the volcano to erupt, left all the blood beasts in chaos, and brutally injured his fellow disciples. Yi Zhang explains that he did it all to make a pill, but Jun realizes that Bai took five of the pills himself and used the rest to make this pill, but she is unimpressed by the useless grade 3 item. Bai admits that the pill has no medical use at all, but explains that there are very few people in the bloodstream sector that can refine a grade 3 pill. He dramatically states that even if it means making an enemy of everyone around him, he is determined to one day be able to make a rare grade 5 pill for the bloodstream sector. One of the elders frightens Yi Zhang when he points out how much he has changed since going to the Fallen Sword Abyss, but is relieved when the elder just thinks Bai triggered his viciousness. This Grand Elder is in charge of the Nameless Peak, and points out how his vicious nature suits them perfectly. The other Grand Elders want him as well, and all make their case for why he should join them. They all become more and more desperate, which leads to a scuffle amongst the powerful leaders. Bai can't believe they are all fighting to recruit him, and he uses the opportunity to antagonize the fight as he states how hard it is to decide between them. The Elders get even more riled up, but Jun arrives to amaze everyone with her ultimate move. The other elders realize they have no chance against her charm and find that they are right when Bai instantly agrees to join the middle peak. Bai can't believe how much control she had over him, but is glad since he wanted to join the middle peak anyway. Sometime later, at the Bloodmaster Hall, we see that a couple of guards are fearful of something, just before they come under attack. Back with Bai, we see that he has arrived at the entrance of middle peak, where he is disappointed to be met by Song. 
The two enter as Bai is amazed by the amazing scenery, and becomes excited when he gets a glimpse of the Bloodmaster Hall. Song puts Yi Zhang down for coveting the Bloodmaster Hall so much, and Bai thinks about how he had Song crying for his parents when they fought at the Fallen Sword Abyss. Yi Zhang is caught muttering, but explains that he was only thinking about how Song's sister is the whole reason he is there. Song brings Yi Zhang to his sister, who has summoned him, but Yi Zhang greets her a bit too casually for Song's liking. Yi Zhang dramatically claims to never have any improper thoughts about Jun, and points out that Song is always just picking on him. Song must take his leave, but warns Yi Zhang to be careful with his words and actions towards his aunt, as failing to do so will result in him cutting off Yi Zhang's tongue. Jun is curious as to why Yi Zhang admires her so much, and he explains that it's because she is the most powerful and good looking person he has ever seen. Jun explains that Sumei is just as admirable as she is, and those that oppose her have taken Sumei's side. Jun has chosen Yi Zhang herself though, and he swears to only follow her as he would risk his life to protect her. She wants to make sure that he isn't weak, and asks that he remember those words when learning the Blood Sector's secret technique called the Blood Killer World. When alone, Bai realizes that she doesn't actually care about him at all, and knows that she simply wants to use him to help her get the Blood Master position. Bai isn't interested in doing that though, and decides to take the Relic of Eternity that night, and return to the Spirit Stream Sector. That night, Dan trembles in fear, as he explains that ever since the previous Bloodmaster died a bizarre tragic death, there have been countless rumors about the Bloodmaster Hall at night. Dan fears there may be a ghost there, as he begs for mercy. Bai explains that he need not worry, as he has Heavenly Vein Foundation establishment, but finds that Dan has already fainted. Bai makes his way into the hall, but is instantly attacked by someone, and wonders if he is also after the Relic of Eternity. Bai wants to avoid a fight and heads to accomplish his goal, but is stopped by the other person as he seemingly wants to kill him to silence him. Bai is surprised to see that the other person is also an intruder, and fears loud noises might alert the guards. Bai uses this information to his advantage, but finds himself fighting the guy again soon after. He stops as he must remind himself not to use spirit sector techniques and pays the price for hesitating. The guards think they might have heard something as Bai is kept quiet, but luckily they are too scared to check the hall. Bai determines that he has no chance of winning without using spirit sector techniques, and decides to use a stranglehold. Things get a bit awkward as this makes him realize that the other intruder isn't a guy, and the intruder attacks him. The attack isn't lethal though as the two are surprised to find that there are power restrictions inside the hall, and the other intruder leaves. Guards come rushing in this time but are surprised to see that no one is there, and determine that it really must be a ghost. Bai hides nearby and is shocked at how powerful the girl was. He is determined to find out who she is and uses his heaven reaching eyes of the law to find her. Unfortunately, his skill is detected somehow, and he determines that she must have an expert with her. Elsewhere, we see that Bai had left a bite mark on the girl, and she is informed by her accomplice that someone was attempting to track her. The accomplice points out how arduous the mission is, and reminds Sumei that she must protect her identity. Sumei then has a memory of her vowing to get revenge on Bai after he left her captured. A mysterious person had found her, and suppressed her consciousness so they could control her body. The accomplice reveals a blood gathering bottle that can speed up her cultivation of the blood killer world technique so that she can fool others, but explains that there is more pressing matters that we don't get to hear. Elsewhere, Jun is in disbelief as she never expected Yi Zhang to make successive breakthroughs in just a few days. It's clear to Song that Yi Zhang desperately clings to life and fears death, so he wonders why his sister thinks so highly of him. She explains that the 10,000 Blood Cliffs trial revealed that Yi Zhang is much more capable than he lets on. Furthermore, she states that there are two types of people that are easiest to control. The first is a person who covets riches, and the second is a person who lusts after women. Song can't stand to see Yi Zhang's eyes for some reason, so Jun states that after she is done using Yi Zhang to become Bloodmaster, Song can gouge his eyes out. That night, Bai understands that he is completely powerless, as using Spirit Stream Sector techniques will give his identity away, and decides that he must hurry and cultivate the Blood Killer World move. However, as he does, something strange begins to happen. A man appears before him and calls out his name Yi Zhang, which causes his strength to be completely suppressed. The man is pleased to see that Yi Zhang has reached Foundation Establishment, and tells him to participate in the Bloodmaster Trial as doing so will easily solve all his problems. 
Bai wonders if he was just in another world, just as three elixirs are presented to him, and he is told that they are sufficient for him to cultivate to mid-stage foundation establishment. Bai remembers that Dan told him about the mysterious person that gave him the mask, and determines that it must have been the same person. He wonders if the man realizes that he isn't Dan, but determines that the man doesn't care as long as he gets the Relic of Eternity. Bai decides not to overthink it though, and just accepts that he has this mysterious person helping him. Thanks for watching part 14, 6,000 likes, and I'll know you want a part 15. Also, all other parts are in a pinned comment below.